there are talented athletes who can exceed and excel if given the opportunity and in most any application. When promoters, regional and national-wide promoters, were offering these levels of money because they were actively engaged in the communities, they were actively bringing in, they were bringing in resources, they were bringing in capital, that's when you saw youth looking for a challenge, looking for fun, looking for money, and the opportunity to prove themselves jumped into jet ski racing. This is where we got the influx of youth racing. We got to get the kids in. I've done videos on this before. How do you get the kids in? Well, there's a double-edged sword. You get the you get the events, you get the promoters, and you get the money. Hey kiddo, you got a chance to make 250 bucks. Hey kiddo, you got a chance to make 500 bucks. Hey kid, if you take the weekend, you make $1500. Oh, well, 1500 bucks goes quite a, quite a long way. Okay, let's do that. Then, all right, and that's regional. Now, you could find a local, you know, Coca-Cola distributor, or you could find a local law firm, or you could find any number of businesses. And you, you want to know why I know this? Because I was around in 93, 94, 95, and I saw the flyers stapled to the wall of, a, of an Ace Hardware. And you looked at the bottom half of that, the bottom half of that flyer had every local business, had the had Ganal Lumber in Los Alamitos, California. And it had this welding business. And it had this auto dealership. And it had this y, XYZ, blah, blah, blah. And it was 50 freaking companies that all said, yeah, I'll pitch in 100 bucks. Yeah, I'll pitch in 50 bucks. Yeah, I'll pitch in, a, you know, $500 and they all added to the kitty. They all added to the pot. The promoter, he was like, I'm making my money off of tickets. I'm making my money off of parking. I'm making my money off of concessions or whatever, or t-shirts or whatever the hell he wanted to do. But, or entry fees for that matter, for the, for the racers. But the purse came from all the sponsorships. Promoters nowadays are not doing their legwork and building up a cash purse for the racers. They are unwilling to promote. They're not doing their job. All right. Now, I'm putting that sounds really awful. I'm putting all this blame on local promoters. All right. Well, what happens? Suddenly, you're a local promoter who starts putting on a really bitching series. And everyone's like, man, Kevin puts on a great series. Look at all the races he puts on in the in this area. Holy cow. And I made some cash off of that. And I made this and I made that and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then you start getting regionals. You get other guys who are, who are picking up on what Kevin's doing and they see what I'm putting up on Facebook and they see what I put up on Instagram. And they go, man, you see Kevin's new truck? You see all the new toys that Kevin's got? There must be a, 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 there must be a business in there that I need to replicate. So you see a promoter really start raking it in and starts doing good. You're going to find other guys spring up going, well, I'm, I want to put up my series. My series is going to be a little different than Kevin's, but blah, 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 blah. Then all it takes is a year or two of this where someone comes in and goes, guys, we got to make a West Coast tour, or we got to make a Middle South tour, or we got to make a whatever tour. And we're going to adopt the IGSBA rule book. Or we're going to adopt AJ's rule book. Or we're going to do our own rule book or whatever. And suddenly you make your own series. And now you got your own sanctioning body. Or you're in bed with another sanctioning body. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It comes together very quickly as long as you're able to do this. So then you get a new crop of talent who are motivated. Now they have a ladder to climb and a championship. That money's got to go into a championship. And it's got to be worth a damn. Now, here's the biggest thing that people are like, kids can't, kids can't afford a $20,000 jet ski. Good. They shouldn't be on those. Don't put a kid on a freaking GP 1800R SVHO. You'd be an idiot. You'd be a bad dad. <laughs> That's why you get them into rec light. And this is the second... 
when I said that double-edged sword, what's the adult, what's the other side of that? The other side of that is where are today's parents? Today's parents don't want their kids riding their bike four blocks over to their friend's house because they're terrified they're going to get kidnapped and sex trafficked because Facebook and Instagram and the daily news has you horrified. All right. So we've got a bunch of helicopter parents. You got a bunch of parents who are like, I'm never going to put Johnny on a dirt bike or I'm never going to put Jenny on a quad. But a 60 horsepower spark or a 90 horsepower EX, well, that's doable. It only goes 40 miles an hour and it's water. It can't be that bad. That's how you get them in. I wouldn't put my kid, if she wanted to go racing, I wouldn't put her on an SXR 1500. I wouldn't even put her on a new super jet. I'd put her on a Sea-Doo or I'd put her on an EX. I would. And I'd have her do rec light racing. Now, the problem is that rec light racing has been shoehorned into sport class. And I get it. They're comparable units. They're not identical. Speed-wise, handling-wise, they're close. If you don't have enough attendees on to fill up a, a, a starting line, might be worth the effort of having a bunch of sport classes and a handful of Sparks or a handful of EXs at the end. Um, the idea, on the other half, is to say, no, 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 no. This is new jet ski racing. We're only doing rec light for youth and stand-up for youth. We're not going to mix rec-, rec light with sport class. Sport class can be its own thing. But the problem is that there's too many damn classes and there's too many damn rules. And people can't compete. And the problem is that racers complain. Well, I don't want to buy that pipe. Well, then you can't compete in that class. Well, that's not fair. No, it's fair. We're going to draw the line. We're going to have five classes or eight classes or whatever. That's the, that's the future. That's where it's got to be is you got to weed out all of these old classes. I know that's terrible. I know there's people who are going to send me hate mail. I know it. But that's really the future. The future's not going to be top down. It's n- you're not going to get it from AJ. You're not going to get it. And that's not, not, it's not, it's not a slam towards AJ. AJ's trying to do his damn thing. AJ's trying his damnedest. All right? He's doing his thing. It's also that this isn't also going to come down from Frazier. And this isn't going to come down from Aqua X. It's got to be regional up. It's got to come from the ground up. Hey, guys. Thanks for hanging out. This clip was taken from our weekly podcast that we record here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to watch the whole video, you can go to the Watercraft Journal's YouTube channel, go to Playlists, and then click on Live Sessions. You're going to see it there. Otherwise, go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. And again, thanks again for watching our videos, and we hope to see you soon.